Hey guys, welcome back to the other craftsmanship. My name is Dustin, and we're gonna be working in the shop again today. It's a nice cold January day, so we'll head inside and I'll show you what we're gonna work on. All right guys, so the project we're gonna work on today is restoring this ax sheath. Um, it's, the leather's in pretty good condition. You can see that the snap has come out of the leather here, but other than that, the leather's in good condition. It needs to be restitched and uh, I may or may not put new rivets in, so we're gonna work on that project today and get it back in the useful condition. Let's get started. So I was visiting my cousin Dan over the Christmas break and talked to him about this ax he had. He said he had it with a sheath that he liked, but it needed some restoration. And so when I checked out the ax, it had been hung upside down um, on this handle the handle was in pretty rough shape and it didn't have a wedge in it. So I offered to bring it home and restore it for him. So I brought it, took it to the wire wheel, cleaned up the mushroom. It was mushrooming pretty badly on the back. So I cleaned that up, preserved the Collins label, which is a nice little Collins ax and resharpened it for him. So I'm going to give this to him, but I'm also going to restore the sheath. I kind of decided that the best way to go about this, since this front edge is a little brittle and a little stiff, I'm trying to get these rivets out what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right along this stitch line that was from here before and remove this about, you know, an eighth of an inch of leather. And with the sheath inside here, there's still plenty of leather. I have almost an inch all the way from the edge now, so that'll still leave me about three quarters of an inch all the way down. And even on the bottom, there's plenty of room here too. So removing this edge, I'll actually get back into cleaner leather that'll hold the stitching better. And then it'll give me the reason also I can cut away these rivets, which are pretty tight instead of trying to preserve them and uh, ruining this little leather edge. All right. When we're trying to find uh, the piece of leather for the welt, we just want to make sure we have a piece that's big enough to go all the way around. I want it to be one continuous piece that goes down the cutting edge and underneath. So just kind of take a look at the edge of what I have here on my roll. I have a lot of funky edges from where I cut stuff off. And since I need a shape that's kind of an L shape, I think I could probably find something that looks like it'll work without using a lot of extra leather. Maybe something like that. I can just trim off here. I only have a little bit of waist leather. Yeah, I think that looks good. See now I have where where the bit of the axe was and where the edge of the welt will be. This gives me plenty of room and this also leave enough room for the bit to slide in and out. But still this welt will protect it from cutting the stitches. That'll be a little thinner on the bottom. Mark it down here. That's where I'll trim it off. So with the welt cut now, that's ready to be glued into place. There's a few other spots that I want to shore up in this leather. Um, one obviously being where the hole is here, where the snap will go. We need to reinforce that with another piece of leather, but also here at the top where the flap flips over. That hole obviously just kind of wears thin over time because that's where the tip or the point of the ax is touching when you fold and close this each time. So I'm gonna reinforce that with some leather. I'll reinforce this with some more leather. And then, uh, and then once we get it all glued in, then I'll go back in and kind of figure out how I want to do the stitching around that to match. But I think I'm going to be using the black leather for that. I just think it'll be a little bit less intrusive. Um, it'll match the kind of aged patina here on the edge of the leather. 
Right, this is center. So what I want to do when I'm when I'm reinforcing this here, I want to make sure that for one, this piece of leather doesn't go down too much further past the flap because I don't really want it to take away too much from the flexibility of the flap. Um, I also want to kind of make sure that I have enough behind it that it's reinforced well onto this leather. But also, when I'm done, when I'm doing the stitches, I want the stitches to be elegant looking in the front as well. They have to be, you know, not decorative, but also not obtrusive. So come up with some type of shape that will match maybe a circle around it, maybe just a, I don't know, we'll see. So I'm just right now kind of doing a general arch. I think what I'll do is I'll stitch kind of an even arch behind it, but I'm just gonna leave a little bit extra all the way around because that's gonna be behind. So even though I might not stitch all the way out to the edge, it will be glued all the way out to the edge and reinforced. So the last piece I'm gonna do is the piece for the hole that's been worn in the top. So this leather has a smooth side and a rough side. Um, I'm gonna sand away the smooth side to get into that rough side. It glues better for in the middle of the welt. I'm also going to thin out this small piece that's gonna be in reinforcing the hole in the top of the leather. And then also because I'm gluing this piece to the back of the flap, I'm gonna sand this uh, as well, the smooth side of this. And then um, that I'll leave the little spot in the middle where the snap's gonna go just in case it shows through, but the rest of it I'll sand off. So again with this little piece I'm just focusing on thinning it out thinning it out some so that way it's more flexible. I don't want to go too much, but I want to make sure it's flexible enough that it won't stop the flap from folding. mark off the inner edge of where the welt is because my next step is gluing everything up. I'm going to be using contact cement and so with that I'll put this contact cement on both surfaces, all the surfaces that will be glued and then let it dry and with this specific contact cement and then you add another layer on top of that once you let get just a bit tacky, and then once it's tacky, then you apply it. So I'm gonna apply it to one surface of the welt, and I'm gonna let that dry and while I'm putting it on the other surfaces, and I'll use it, do it on the other surface as well, the welt. So with this uh, specific cement, suggest that if you're 
gluing on a really poor surface that you could let it dry fully and add a second layer. I'm not super worried about this leather. I mean, it's porous, but it's, you know, I usually do just one layer and it's fine. But because this spot here is gonna be the most stressed spot because it's gonna be using the snap on and off, I'm gonna let this dry and put another coat on just so it's completely saturated with contact cement all the way into the leather. So that way when I put the backing piece on, it's bonded as, as strong as possible. first coat's dry all the way around. I added a second coat of contact cement behind where the button is going to go, the snap. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, add another layer of glue onto these and wait till it gets tacky and then I'm going to put it all together. This contact cement is a little bit more forgiving than others, but usually what you want, you want to make sure everything is perfectly placed before you press it together because once it's together, there's no taking it apart. Again, put this last piece on, I'm just lining it up. And again, I wanna make sure that it's not all the way to the edge. I want a little bit of a space just to make sure that from the front, you don't really see it too much. Yeah. So it fits nice and tight in right up to the welt here. Sits so deep enough down in, so that way this, the toe tip of the bit sits down. And we are reinforcing this, so that'll help to protect that. All right, looks good. I'm just gonna come back over to the belt sander. I'm just gonna clean up this edge all the way around real quick. Make it nice and flush, nice and even. At the same time I'm trimming this up, I was also putting a little bit of a bevel on the edges all the way around. And that'll just help when I'm finishing this edge. So now we have a nice clean edge, just leather all together all the way around. And now I can measure out my stitches from here. Now I've done a lot of sheaths just by eye, so I feel comfortable doing it. If you don't, you know, you can also buy tools that'll mark, you know, three or two or three or four, even five holes at a time. 
They're usually straight. They look like little forks. Um, so you can use one of those or buy a roller. I could even get a, long, uh, a stitch marker that's a little bit bigger so the stitches are a little bit further apart, but I'm not too worried about it. All right, so I'm coming down to the last few holes. So I know I wanna finish close to here. So I'm gonna start kind of judging how many holes you can fit in that space. So I have one, two, so I think I can do three more. So I'm gonna mark one and then divide the distance up by three. Should be pretty close. And that way if you kind of divide that space up evenly you don't end up running up to where you have a hole that's really close to your last hole. You wanna make sure all those holes are nice and evenly spaced apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the drill press and drill all these holes out. follow along this line with the uh, the line marker. Uh, but I like to do that afterward because I don't wanna punch out these holes and then flip it over and realize that I wasn't in the line at all. So this way I can kind of do it organically and follow the holes and I'll have that same crisp line. So I just kind of went back and forth and refined up this shape to make sure it looked the way I wanted it to. And now I'm gonna and just trace it. And this is what I'm gonna use to mark my stitching, use my stick, stitching line, and then to drill the holes. gonna start stitching this together. I like to use a, a wooden screw vise to hold this in place and I had that held in at the end of my vise, at the end of my bench, my bench vise. So holding that in and then this way I can hold onto my leather, keep both my hands free. And uh, I'm just using a saddle stitch to stitch the, uh, the sheath, the end of the sheath now where the welt is. Um, if you're curious about how that's done, 
you look into my uh, bushcraft sheath, bushcraft knife sheath video, and that goes in a little bit more in depth into about how I do the saddle stitch. So if you want to check out that video, I'll put in the link, a link in the description below, and you can check that video out. All right, so to finish off, I'm gonna feed this front needle back through to the back, and then I'll tie it off in the back. So I have both threads on the back now, so just tie a single overhand knot like that, and just make sure you're pulling it tight toward the back, and then just alternate the direction. So my first one I went right over left, so the second one I'm going to go left over right, and it creates a square knot. Make sure that first one is tight where you want it and pull the second one tight. And those two, that type of knot locks itself together. And then I'll just do one more half knot on top of that. So I'll cut these off and burn them. So I'm gonna trim these off just about maybe eighth of an inch or so. Maybe, come on scissors work. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and just warm them up and you'll see they'll just shrink right in to the knot. This is an artificial sinew so it's made of nylon and that actually bound all that knot together and melt it together. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do before we finish the sheath is put a new snap head on. So this is the one that tore out of this piece. Um, the bottom part is still nice and secure. This leather here is really good, so I'm not worried about this piece. Um, I'm gonna replace the top, and I'm gonna use a brass snap. It's a line 24 size, so it's gonna match up perfectly, but I just think the brass is gonna look nicer with the warmth of the sheath. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch a hole in the middle of this, and then we'll set this on, and we'll finish it up. like to give these a twist if I can, just to make sure that cutting edge cuts all the way around. There we go, nice clean hole. Let's see if it fits. Good. All right. All right, so with this, there's a little kind of indented anvil in the back, so the snap sits in there. And then you have a specific set has a raised middle which is rounded out that will then push into this and it'll round this edge out and curl it over the snap part.
So we've finished up all the stitching in the snap. So all we have left now is just to finish the edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some leather dye and use that so when you finish an edge, you wanna get it wet and then burnish it and that will kind of lock all those fibers together and make a nice kind of smooth edge which then will be more water resistant. So I'm gonna use the wetness of the dye to act as that There we go. So that's all burnished now, nice and smooth. So this is Neat's Foot Oil, which is a specific oil that's designed for leather. So we're just gonna go ahead and put a really good coating on it, nice and thick, the entire thing. This is just looking really beautiful. It's the it's darkening up really nice. Just shining. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. This has been really fun. It turned out really great. We just finished it up oiling the sheath. I think it looks beautiful. Um, I'm really happy with it the way it turned out, and it just shows you how you can really take something that was pretty much right on the edge of being thrown away, and uh, a couple pieces of leather and a snap, and just gives you the ability to kind of just breathe life right into a new piece of, you know, a project that you're working on. And this gives you something as well that's going to last a long time and will uh, potentially be something that my cousin Dan can give to his children and after he gets a bunch of years out of it. So we'll do the final fit, test it out and see how it looks. So it's nice and snug, all the leather fits really well. Slides in. And the snap works well too, so. Turned out great, I'm really happy with it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. And follow us on Instagram as well. We'll put up some pictures of things that we're going to be doing in the future and videos that are coming up. So hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys in the next video.